So, a fresh new week has arrived, and here on this channel, that means one thing and one thing only. Every week or weekend, I post an episode of the series we do called Your Take, Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week, based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week, we saw the in-season tournament crown a winner, we've seen some more trade rumors start to swirl, and the standings are starting to look pretty interesting. So far, so we have a lot to discuss. Discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now. So if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start though, I want to thank PrizePix for sponsoring today's video. PrizePix is a skill-based, real money daily fantasy sports game where you select two to six players and guess if they will hit more or less than their projection, and if you get it right, you can win up to 25 times your original entry. Obviously, we're all basketball fans here, but PrizePix has almost every sport you can think of available to choose from and play. Add to the fun, they also offer frequent bonuses discounts and weekly promotions, such as Taco Tuesday and Flex Friday, plus so many more specialty free spaces to watch for throughout the year, so you don't want to miss those. I personally will be playing Brandon Ingram to score over 20.5 points, RJ Barrett to make over 1.5 threes, and Contavious Caldwell-Pope to make over 1.5 threes too, for tonight's slate of games. To sign up, go down to the link in the description and use promo code REFERENCE when you sign up to get a deposit match bonus of up to $100. Once again, thank you to Prize Picks for sponsoring the video. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Ryan, and he says that the Warriors era on top is officially over, despite them trying everything in their power to keep it alive. For pretty much the entirety of the last decade, the Warriors have been a relevant contender at the top of the Western Conference, and at the peak of their dynasty, they were so good that winning the title was basically a foregone conclusion before the year even started. Steph Curry has of course been the one leading the way for them throughout their entire run, and as long as he's playing at an elite level, it's really hard to count them out of anything, but the reality at this point is that the team around him is starting to get over the hill. Clay Thompson is a shell of his former self, having arguably the worst year of his entire career, as he's shooting the ball worse than he ever has, and he's scoring the fewest amount of points per game in a season since his rookie season, and he's no longer even the defensive stalwart that he used to be. The same could be said about Andrew Wiggins as well, who has also just not been able to get into a rhythm shooting the ball at any kind of consistent rate this year. Chris Paul has been a positive in the facet of playmaking, but a negative in pretty much every other aspect of the game, and there are a lot of difficult decisions that need to be made regarding maybe benching some of these core veteran players in favor of their younger talent like Jonathan Kuminga and Moses Moody. Kuminga and Moody have both been huge pluses off the bench for this team, but down the stretch of games, Coach Kerr consistently opts to play the experienced veterans in crunch time, and quite a few times that decision has bit them in the butt, in games that ended up being losses. I'll be honest, something probably needs to change with the Warriors' overall rotation and priorities, because you can't keep leaning on the over-the-hill talent and expecting things to change. Referring back to the original tweet, I do believe the best days of the Warriors' core group are obviously behind them, with the exception of Steph Curry who is still balling out, but if they start to trust guys like Moody and Kuminga more in big spots, their season doesn't have to be as doomed as it looks right now. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Dylan, and he says that Chet Holmgren is a lock for the Rookie of the Year because of the fact that he's helping a winning team, and Victor Wembanyama is not. This year's Rookie of the Year race is essentially looking like a two-man race between Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembanyama. The Rookie of the Year race is always one of the more interesting awards to follow because it's between the next generation of talent battling to make an immediate impact, and both Wembanyama and Holmgren are doing just that at a pretty high level. Coming into the year, Victor Wembanyama had all of the hype in the world surrounding him. Because of his unique physical tools, combined with his tantalizing skill, and because of it, the assumption in the minds of many was that he would just run away with the Rookie of the Year award. 
But those same people seem to have forgotten that there was another unicorn-esque talent preparing to make their debut after a year of injuries, and Chet Holmgren has reminded everyone why he was the second name off the board in 2022. As the original take states, these two do actually have pretty similar production, as Holmgren is putting up about 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 2.4 blocks per game, while Victor Wembanyama is putting up about 19 points, 10 rebounds, and 2.7 blocks per game, so on paper, Wembenyama has the slight edge. A counter to that argument is the fact that Holmgren has been shooting the ball much more efficiently at 52% from the field and 37% from three, compared to Wembenyama's mediocre 43% from the field and 25% from three. Holmgren is also making his mark on a team at the top of the standings, playing his role and helping them win games, while Wembenyama has the green light on a team at the bottom of the standings, and you should should favor teams helping their group win games in these instances, but the Rookie of the Year award hasn't always been like that. If I had a vote, I would give it to Holmgren at this point in time. But historically, the Rookie of the Year winner has simply been the rookie with the best per game averages whether you like it or not, so it wouldn't surprise me to see Wembenyama take it home if that trend continues. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Arson, and he says that the in-season tournament is going to overtake the NBA Finals in terms of importance because teams are healthier early on in the year, there's better prizes, and the single elimination is better than the best of seven series format. Well, before I say anything else, I'll start by saying that this will never happen. The NBA Finals will always be the ultimate prize that means the most and is the most difficult to win. The seven-game series rounds are the best way to do it because realistically, the best team will still have a bad game here and there, but you can't fluke your way to four wins. Now with all of that being said, I can absolutely admit that the in-season tournament surprised me in a pretty good way, and won me over, because when it first got announced, I thought it was a dumb gimmick. The lack of early season interest in the NBA was a real issue that gets repeated all the time by casual fans who tend not to tune into basketball until after football season is over, but I actually do think the in-season tournament will do a lot of good bringing more eyes to the game early on in the season. When teams make it out of their group, the concept of single elimination brackets are undoubtedly a recipe for excitement, intensity, and entertainment. If any of you are soccer fans, it's meant to be similar to the importance of the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup in England, where winning it still absolutely is a goal for the teams involved, and winning the trophy always gets celebrated, but the biggest prize of all is obviously winning the Premier League title, or in this case the NBA Finals, which is the embodiment of the entire season. I know it's frustrating seeing a lot of teams struggling with injuries by the time the playoffs roll around, and the champion basically just being the healthiest team left, but that's all part of the grind, and it makes winning it even more special. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the takes we discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.